Hi everyone, Carol and Kristen here today talking about finding God within ourselves. Not somewhere out there, but actually within our own selves, our own souls. And you know, it just turned out that a couple of days ago I was doing uh, my, my opening my day in prayer, giving my first hour of the day to God, which is something I've really been working on as a spiritual practice as of the last month or two. And so I took myself to sacredspace.ie, which is a site that I've been using for literally uh, at least a decade or more. It's a great resource. And it really is a, a great resource, and I, I really love it. And it had been a little while since I'd been on there. And so I, I got on, and I was so inspired by what I was reading and, and what, where it was taking me on my spiritual journey. And uh, and I was and then I I was uh, kind of messing around with some of the other links and I landed on something that just really touched my soul and it's it's so depthful that I decided we need to do a we need to do a video on this and and I I can't do it justice so I'm going to actually just read to you this little piece because it was it was talking about Ignatian spirituality which we are both big fans of Absolutely. and you know love the idea that everything in your life can be a source of spirituality for you there's nothing that can't be all of the things that happen to you in a day's time and you don't need to go any further than the last hour or the last 24 hours to see how God is working in your life and so this was a little piece about Ignatian spirituality and inviting ourselves to dig deeper to to trust our deepest selves and our deepest desires and that God you know that desire is God's unique gift to us and um, it made me think of St. Augustine who said our hearts are restless until they rest in so thee you know thoughts, just yeah. love that yeah. But uh, so anyhow, I'm going to read to you this little piece because it's really quite profound. And then we're going to have a little quick conversation about it. But they go on to say that many of us have learned to think of God's will as something outside of ourselves, an ex external blueprint that we must follow. Nothing is further from the truth. We find God within ourselves when we get in touch with our deepest desire. Of course, that doesn't come easily. We have all sorts of competing desires and we need to pay close attention to them if we are to sift through them and unearth what is actually at our core. Now that is a, that's a spiritual experiment that I think we should all partake of. Absolutely. Trying to figure out what is literally at our core of a spiritual nature. So then it goes on to talk about a legend and this is where I want you to really plug in and pay attention. Don't, don't walk away here. There is an ancient legend from India that says that once upon a time, humans shared in God's wisdom, but that they so abused it that God and his heavenly court decided to take it away from them and hide it until they were mature enough to appreciate it. But where should they hide it? One angel suggested, let us bury it deep within the earth. But God said, no. They will dig down into the earth and find it. Another angel said, let's take it to the top of the highest mountain and hide it there. While another said, let's hide it in the depth of the ocean. But God rejected both suggestions. They will eventually climb every mountain and explore the depths of every sea. Then there is nowhere to hide it, said the angels. God thought for a long time and then said, here is what we will do. We will hide it deep within their being. They will never think of looking there. And since then, the story goes, humans have been searching outside themselves for their deepest meaning, never realizing that it is buried within them in their deep heart's core. Mm. Mm. I love it. I just had to, I read that and then I just had to sit there for a while and contemplate that. Mm -hmm. And then I read it again and then I sat for a while again <laughs> and I just sat with that and I'm like, you know, I think I need to, and then I took a picture of it mm -hmm. so that I would have it in my arsenal of really like depthful things that I want to keep reminding myself of. Mm -hmm. Then I sent it to a friend and said, Get a load of this. This is very cool. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I just think that, you know, the whole, you know, find, trying to find your deepest core, your deepest meaning, and, the, and, and God hides it within our, our deepest selves, our own souls. Mm -hmm. What stood out to you? What, what, what did you think about when you were listening to that? Well, two things immediately came to mind. One is that you always talk about how, you know, the inner sanctuary of our own souls mm -hmm. and how our own soul is a private place to meet and commune with God. And I just love that, you know, because that even takes me back to the mystics who say, you know, you talk to me as if I were so far away from you, but I'm very near. Mm -hmm. um, in your own soul and so which you carry with you all the time it never right. leaves you right you don't so, have to get to a church or a holy place you're yeah. always walking around with your soul yes inside your body absolutely mm -hmm. so you can always go to that sacred space because yeah. it's within you right. right and then the other thing that came to me was actually um, the poem by um, Yeats William Butler Yeats who's an Irish poet one of the best of the 20th century he wrote a poem called Innisfree and it was just so funny because I don't know if sacred space or if that uh, legend got it from him, he got it from them, or they were just so on the same page because he ends that um, poem in history with "I hear it in the deep heart's core." Oh wow! And what so, are the chances yeah, that we both know. use those exact yeah, words? The, the so somebody hearts. most likely got it from somebody. Well, you know that they <laughs> say that the greatest form of flattery is like imitation. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know, but I love even just those words are so powerful, you know, like the deep hearts core. And so, you know, if this really resonated with you, I would definitely recommend checking out the poem in a spree. And then also it was set to choral music that I then sang while I was at Interlock. And so it has, it's got so many, so much meaning to me, but even yeah. the choral arrangement is stunning. And I would look up the one by the uh, composer, Gerald Custer. And Westminster Abbey, their choir, has a version of it on YouTube. It's so beautiful. Um, but if you kind of want to put yourself in that sacred space, um, I would definitely recommend reading the poem, listening to the choral music, because it just really helps you come back to, you know, our souls are sacred. They are sanctuaries. They are carriers of the divine. God created us. He loves us. And he is here with us in the very core of our being. I think that's so powerful. Oh, it is. It is. You know. So the question that begs to be asked here is, do you listen to your deepest self, to your deepest soul? And I think that we, we Satan's greatest distraction, our greatest weapon is distraction. We just did a blog post on that a week ago. And, you know, he is always distracting us. Our world is very distracted. There's a lot going on, which is why if we really want to delve into the deepest recesses of our soul, we have to be intentional and deliberate as we do with so many holy practices. But it goes back to how are you setting yourself up for success in terms of getting into that depthful place that resides right in your own soul. And to me, it, it requires me, which is why I am trying to develop the habit of ha giving my first hour to God and just really delving in. And I'm in a position to be able to do that. I know some of our listeners out there are not able to do that. They have small children, have to get them out the door. You know, we have school and other things. Um, been there, done that, and I don't have to do that every morning, but I can... I can spend that time and I all and I actually have a very specific place that I go in our home to do it to have this special time with God and I I like to light candles because if I get distracted all I have to do is glance at that flame and that so reminds me of the power of God in my midst that he is here with me mm -hmm. I like to take a picture of of Jesus and set it in front of me so that I can gaze upon his face and it's it's I don't get as distracted because it's like oh yeah you're here you're here this is mm -hmm. our time right mm -hmm. now but you know I try to set myself up for success yep. and remember to keep the main thing the main thing and the main thing is I'm trying to have an hour of deliberate communion with God mm -hmm. who is residing in my soul mm -hmm. and you know and then of course going to mass participating in the sacraments mm -hmm. tonight we have um uh, adoration, which is another way that I love to commune with God. I think adoration is so peaceful. If you haven't gone to adoration for a while, I would encourage you to consider it because it is such a beautiful, holy way to commune with God and to enter into the deep recesses of your soul. And you never know where God's going to take you. I always say, you know, Lord, not sure where we're going to go in this hour of adoration, not sure where you're going to take me, but 
wherever it is, I'm sure it's going to be good space for me. And it's, and I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing because I trust that you love me and you know what I most need. So, well, and it comes back to two words, you know, silence and solitude. Yeah. You know, and, and yet again, you don't have to start with an hour. It could just be, you know, you could start off yeah. with three minutes. Three is a very holy number, you know, <laughs> three minutes, you know, but building in time to yeah. be deliberate about silence and solitude and stillness and just trying to put yourself in sacred space, getting in touch, like we said, with your yeah. deep heart's core. You know, some of the great theologians will tell you that um, it is oftentimes towards the end of your communing with God that you you best mm -hmm. hear his voice. So if you are in a situation, three minutes barely gets you even started. It's a good it's a good starting place. Three minutes is better well, you than gotta nothing. Start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. <laughs> but I would challenge you to at least, you know, you can start with three, build it up to four or five, and get to a place where you're at least spending fifteen minutes. You know, where you can really have something depthful. And then, you know, and the great thing is that's doable. You that, know, for most people, 15 minutes, that's doable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we, we are a people of rhythms. You know, we, we have a rhythm of day and night. We have a rhythm of eating. We eat three meals a day. We have a rhythm of sleeping. You know, we have these rhythms. And when you can make your holy habits part of the rhythm of your life, mm -hmm. then I think that is where you are better able to get in the rhythm of God being a part of your mm -hmm. breathing and mm -hmm. your walking mm -hmm. and your movement and mm -hmm. everything about your day, inviting mm -hmm. him into that experience. Mm -hmm. And that's how it begins. By well, like Richard Rohr calls it, you know, like the divine dance, you know, that everything throughout your day is you dancing with God. And yeah. Yeah. That's a nice metaphor for uh, that relationship. Mm -hmm. But the point is, to have the relationship because there is God is always speaking to us. He's always moving in our lives. He's always trying to communicate with us. We're the ones that are not focused on, no. uh, you know, on that relationship. And so, you know, remember that God is always residing in the sanctuary of our own private soul. And what he has to say to me is very different than what he has to say to you, what he has to say to Kristen. We all have um, our own special relationship with the divine. And so don't miss out on that. It's a, it's a, it's makes life worth living. Absolutely. So. And such a special and sacred yeah. part of our lives. It so is. if is. you're feeling so inspired by today's video and you'd like to support the mission of Luminous Ministries, please visit our website at www. Wow, can't talk, www.luminousministries.com slash donate. And also, if you are interested in more of this kind of topic, we would really encourage you to check out our retreat, Reflect, Renew, Reignite. Or The Mystic in You would be another good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because they're very much about these these topics, these themes. And yeah. so those Maybe now is a good time to say that we have about 25 to 30 different retreat experiences that we offer uh, with Luminous Ministries. So if you go to our website, you can check all of those out by Absolutely. going to the programming link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So we hope that you have a wonderful day and that you find some time to be intentional about silence and solitude and stillness and getting in touch with your creator who resides within your very body, within your very soul, at your deep heart's core.